You're watching Burke's Backyard. We're at the Arthur's Seat Maze in Dramana in Victoria tonight. This is their Japanese garden in the middle of one of the mazes. It is rather nice, isn't it? Japanese gardens are very much minimalist. They often feature interesting arrangements of gravels, particularly where they're raked, and inscrutable stones and twisted ganalid trees. Very simple thing to do, and it can look very, very effective, particularly if it's screened off like this. You do need fences around it. But now it's time for tonight's celebrity gardener, Stan Zamanik. And, of course, he was involved in the very tragic uh, Sydney to Hobart yacht race recently, where very sadly a number of people actually died. But uh, Stan Zamanik, as he has in the electronic media, as always, managed to survive. Oh, this is new on radio. You joined Gutbusters. No, I didn't say I joined Gutbusters at all. That's See, you've obviously got selective hearing, you idiot. Because you're a bloody disgrace to the human race. You always have been. You're an imbecile and good night. Downsizing my bum. Let me tell you, there is plenty of work out there if you want to get off your fat backside and go out there and get it. Stand for Marnik. All these blushes out there. Really they should be out there looking for a bloody job. They've called me a racist. Not one person yet has been able to show me where I've made a racist comment. They call me a chauvinist. And I agree, I am a chauvinist. Well, darling, it's in the latest survey that has just come out. Well, how did they survey them? Well, darling, they surveyed. They test the teachers, for God's sake. No, they didn't. Oh, darling, they didn't, te they didn't test the teachers? They call me biased. Yes, I am biased. I'm all those things. But, I mean, I, I wear that, that, uh, that honour like a badge, the most complaint about broadcaster in Australia, because I've made people sit up and take notice. So what? Robert's so You what? probably insult them more than anyone, call them a, whatever it is, a... Well, I call them buffheads and dickheads and, uh, and all the names under the sun. But what amazes me is you insult them on Monday night, on Tuesday they're back again for round two. You know, they love it. You know, you can sense in their voice they love the thrill of the debate. You know, sometimes with some of the callers that I get on the radio program, I don't know how they get out of bed, but that's another story. Have <laughs> you got nothing better to do in life? I've got plenty to do, you big fat heap of trash. Whoa, dear, oh dear. Oh, you... Oh, you are a hurtful little person, Gary. Well, Don, this is, this is where I grew up as a kid. Things have changed enormously here. I mean, here you see all these lovely houses around the place. But back then, in those days, I mean, it was just like the Beverly Hillbillies. You know, there was no electricity, there was no gas, there was no sewerage. Um, we lived by uh, lantern lights and all that sort of stuff. But growing up here was the most fantastic time. Well, Don, this is the tribe. This is uh, my oldest, this is Gabrielle, she's 27. This is uh, Marcella, the child bride. We won't sort of go into her <laughs> no age. <thanks. laughs> and this is the uh, this is the child, this is the Melissa, baby. the baby. She's uh, 23. And you have, as proud parents, you have wonderful news about both your daughters. Yes, I mean, it really comes in pairs in this place. <laughs> they both came back from overseas and they said, well, we're, we're getting married, Dad. And I said, well, that's terrific. And they said, yeah, but we're both getting married in the same, uh, in the same year. So they're getting married six weeks apart. Goodness. So you got rid of two daughters in one year. That's a great achievement. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My grocery bill's going to go downhill very quickly, yeah. I can tell you. Marcella, how did you meet him? I met him working on the John Laws program. Ah, so Lawsy and Radio, in a way, and Lawsy brought you together. Yeah, yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah. What did you think of her when you first saw her? I thought, what a good sort. <laughs> <laughs> a I long thought, time ago. <laughs> I thought, uh, you know, what a good sort she is. And, and, and I know that when we were working at the old TUW, everyone used to fancy Marcella. And uh, they always used to That's sort of look at Marcella true. walking down the hallway. That's not true. Yes. I was just a friendly person. <laughs> <laughs> and greetings, fellow massacres. Yes, it's time once again for another torturous hour of Beauty and the Beast. I'm San Zamani, chief beast and resident bully boy, and aren't I good at that, girls? I am fantastic at being a bully boy. Daughters, what's he really like? He's lovely. He's, 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 he's the best dad that anybody could have. He really is. I mean, he's not like what he is on air or on, or on television. Yeah. He's very quiet at home. We almost have to pry words out of him because as soon as he comes home, he just loves to relax and not talk. Watch, watch TV and veg out, basically, on the lounge. That's his favourite pastime. Mm. But he's not allowed to lay on the lounge? <laughs> well, it's, it's a bit of a sore spot with him all because... Um, See, Donna, I always wanted to have white lounges. So when we moved to this new house, I thought, well, we'll have white lounges. The only trouble is I'm not allowed to put my feet up. If I do put my feet up on them, she puts a blanket over my feet to make sure that the, the lounges don't get spoiled. I'm not allowed to move the pillows. 
<laughs> you know, and I said, well, what's the use of having the lounges? And she said, well, you wanted the white lounges, you know, they've got to look white. <laughs> he's so. the only one that's allowed to lie down. None of us are allowed to lie down. <laughs> he's the only one that does, and he always gets away with it, I guess, because he paid for it. <laughs> oh, just, just thinking, Stan, you'll have to work very hard this year. I mean, a lot of money. That's two big weddings you've got to pay for. Well, that's why I'm, I'm pleased that, uh, you know, Beauty and the Beast is going so well, so I'll have two jobs to go to, two pay packets, and I'm going to need every penny, I think. I think if you get out of the plastic surgeon one more time, you'll look like bloody Elvis, I can tell you. I know you went through some fairly tough years but in radio and that. I mean, there was a lot of years where you were sort of sitting on the outskirts there with nothing much happening. Uh, I mean, I can remember 10 years ago, you know, we were flat broke. We had a, a business investment that went down um, and I came home to Marcella one Friday and I'd just taken the last few hundred bucks out of the bank account. I said, we've got a dollar fifty left in our bank account. That was only 10 years ago. And I just said, well, you know, we've got to do something about it. So we just both went out and got jobs. We started the building up again. And once again, perseverance and persistence, it all pays off. I'm actually getting a little bit nervous now because I'm finally out here. I finally made the plans to do my first Sydney to Hobart yacht race. But uh, it's going to be a great time, I'm sure. Although I'm not looking forward to that southerly buster coming through at uh, 12 o'clock tonight. Now, Stan, a lot of people were deeply, deeply upset over what happened uh, with the Sydney to Hobart race. Mm. You survived. We survived. That's what they're upset about. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you, the first night back on air as well, yes, there were a lot of people that were upset that I came back. In fact, a lot of people thought that I or wished that I'd actually died and fallen overboard. But uh, it was, look, it was a tough race. It was the toughest race I've ever been in in 42 years of sailing. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. And the waves were huge, and when I say huge, they were taller than that mast. Um, you know, was, was there ever a point when you thought, I'm for it, this is it at the end? Yeah, there was a two hour period there in the middle of the storm where I actually prayed, because I thought, I genuinely thought we would never see our family again, never see wife and kids and all that again. Did you pray to yourself? I, well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a modest man, Don. <laughs> no, I prayed to the man upstairs. No. And it obviously, it, it must be like for you and everybody else, must have upset you terribly that all those people were lost. Yeah, all those guys, we knew them. You know, we'd uh, only just a few days before the start of the Sydney Hobart, we were having a drink with them here in this yacht club. And when we heard the May Day signal go out and then we heard the rescue people talking about where they were and how they were going to get them, I mean, you just get this sinking feeling in your gut. You know, these are our mates, these are our friends. You know, we've known them all our all our lives. We've sailed with them in the skiff club in the 16s and the 18 footers. And here they were, mates of ours, trying to save their lives in the most horrendous conditions you could ever imagine. And in here, this is my den in here, um, where I sort of create the mayhem. And this is Sue Ellen, Sue, Hi, Ellen, Sue Ellen, Don Burke. No, I want to notice the book. How's it been going? The, the book is, of, yeah. The thoughts of Chairman Stan. <laughs> well, the book actually uh, sold out just before Christmas. They've done another reprint, right. I think, of another 30,000 for uh, the next few months. It's been fantastic. Straight from your office, you look after the pool and everything. It's not a bad setup. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. You know, I like to keep comfortable. And, and it, when I want to, if I get a bit uh, pressurised, I suppose, I can just go for a bit of a swim. And, yeah, that's very nice. And that's what but it's all barbie, about. The barbie, the table. Yeah, there. the barbie and... All the greenery around here, if I only knew the name of some of the plants. <laughs> the new house is lovely. We love it. Great views, it's got that lovely beachside feel. Yeah, it's, it's the sort of house that we like. I mean, we like things open. You know, we don't like houses with rooms closed off everywhere. And we just like that open effect. And it's, it's our sort of lifestyle, it's the way we live. We like things nice and relaxed and nice and comfortable. Um, around our place, there's no airs and graces. You know, you come to our place and it's just, you know, how are you? Have a drink, have something to eat, and it's just good fun. Put your feet up on the lounge. <laughs> not, <laughs> not quite, Don. Not quite. Not quite. Up and down the coast, raise your glass and propose a toast to Stan's harmonic, the nighttime radio king. Sir Winston Stands Churchill was another great verbal jouster. When British politician Nancy Astor quipped, Winston, if I were your wife, I would put...